My name is Don Dixon. I live in Southern California. <clears throat> the subject I'm going to speak of, I've spent the last 30 years of my life studying, reading, trying to figure it out. I'm 80 years old, uh, so that you can know a little something about me. I, uh, I'm a multimillionaire. I don't need to make money. I like to make money, but I don't need to make money. I have a 12th grade education. Uh, I spent two years in the Army. I'm a devoted family man. Uh, I'm a patriot. I'm conservative. I've uh, never been charged with any crime. Uh, I think I've had one moving violation and I never been in an accident. So that kind of gives you a little background on me that uh, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. So what you're going to hear is a little bit astonishing and I hope you'll just bear with me. I'll try to be as brief as I can in giving you the, my theory and then I'm going to give you supporting evidence of, that supports my theory. In today's world, it's become common to accept the fact that we humans are made out of mind, body, and soul. When I was uh, younger, in my 20s and 30s, 40s, I never heard mind, body, and soul. Um, I would hear the word spirit from time to time, but I never heard about mind, body, and soul. So today's thinking is pretty common that we have a soul. And what my studies have brought me to is a conclusion that our soul is God, or the God force. Now, I'm not a Bible thumper. Yes, I've read the Bible. I've probably been to church five or six times in my entire life. There's reasons behind that. So. I'm not, I'm not here to sell you on the word God. I'm here to talk about the soul. You know, modern man supposedly is about 40,000 years old. Uh, modern man has always prayed. Modern man has always believed there was some kind of a God. Pray to the fertility God or the crop God or the rain God. And since Jesus Christ, the word God has become uh, something that is accepted throughout the world. If you're not an atheist and believes there's just nothing, then you have to believe that, or you want to believe that there is a God. And certainly I've sat around enough campfires and looked up into the night skies and wondered and wondered and wondered. So about so what I want to tell you again, and I want to try to prove to you, is that we are made of mind, body, and soul, and our soul is God. So let me tell you how I came to some of these conclusions, and again I'll be brief, I'm going to be doing a lot of skipping of my studies, many, many, many books documentaries, television, newspapers, magazines, etc., etc., etc. When I was about 52 years old, uh, right in that area, my wife and I made a trip back to uh, Washington, D.C., and going through the Smithsonian Institute, I got a book called Blueprint. I don't know why I bought it, but I bought it, and I brought it home, and I read it. And it was described to me in the beginning, and the theory was at that time, this is 30 years ago now, the theory was that uh, there was a big bang, and that big bang, that big explosion, uh, was this sphere of material, or a solid, that blew up, and it created everything that we see in the night sky, and we see in the entire universe. That was the theory then. 
the theory has come around to our scientists are telling us now, no, it wasn't a mass. It was just pure energy. It was energy. It blew up. It got into the skies, this energy. It mixed up together. It formed a huge fireball. Uh, the fireball ultimately cooled and got a crust. And, and it was energy that created everything that we see in our entire universe and everything that we haven't seen. So, what was that? I don't know, 14 billion years ago or something. And here on Earth it took billions of years to cool. And my second book, uh, Cool and Support Life, I should say, my second book was uh, of importance was Darwin's Theory of Evolution. When I was uh, a young man in my 20s, starting to watch news and read papers, the theory of evolution was, I don't know, it was kind of just getting started. Dar Darwin was way ahead of his time. And I can distinctly remember when uh, Life magazine presented a, a front page cover of, of a hairy ape walking on all fours and then standing a little and standing a little and standing a little and pretty soon you had modern man. And religious believers just hit the roof on that thing because that started a tremendous fight of creation versus evolution. The creators said, oh no, uh, that can't be. The church solved their problems by saying it was a divine intervention that, well, maybe that's, that's the way evolution did, but at some point in time, God stepped in and, uh, and uh, made Adam and Eve, and, and you know that story. So, everything in the beginning was energy. That's a, the key word to this. So, my, my next book of importance was I read a book called The Secret Life of Plants. And this was way before DNA testing. You know, they've, they've te proven now that all living things on Earth have a DNA. Uh, have the, the chromosomes have the ability to reproduce. So, this book, the Secret Life of Plants taught me that plants, trees, all foliage is capable of, of thinking, communicating, and feeling. So that says to me that every living thing on earth is made of mind, body, and soul. One of my next books spoke of altruism and how species can literally wipe themselves out through greed. And, uh, you know, my personal belief is that the human race is getting real close to that. One of the reasons I want this documentary to be made is so that I can be a part of changing the thinking of mankind, elevating the human consciousness. My, one of my next studies, that was an extremely important study, was, was uh, Neil Donald Walsh wrote a, uh, three books called A Conversation with God. I'll give you a little background in case you haven't read that or done that study. Neil Donald Walsh was a writer. Uh, he worked for, I think it was a magazine. And, uh, he found himself living in a tent up in San Francisco. He had lost everything, everything. Lost his wife, uh, lost his money. He's living in a tent. And uh, one day he raised his hands and he said, Why me, God? And he heard a voice. It was Ed, Ed Asner plays God in that. And the voice said, uh, Do you really want to know or are you just venting? And Walt said, I really want to know. I want to know if there's a God. Now bear in mind that 
Walsh had a tremendous background in the church. He was a Catholic, he was a choir boy, spent a lot of time in the church. So he claims that he was just a scribe. He grabbed a pad and a pencil and he began a conversation with God. And it's a remarkable study. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I, I learned so much in that, in that study. I'm so grateful for him and the fact that this happened. I might mention that there was a lady who wrote uh, A Course in Miracles. And she refused to put her name on it or take any money for it. But she also claimed that she was a scribe, that this was a voice that was talking to her. So I begin to put together the fact that, well, if in the beginning it was just all energy, and Einstein said there is no more or no less energy on Earth today than there was in the very beginning, and that Earth was formed strictly by energy, then we know that we have energy inside of us. Uh, my understanding is that we have instruments so fine now that they can actually measure the energy that leaves your body when you die. My question is, where did it go? Where did that energy go? How did that energy get in your body to begin with? You could say, well, it came through the umbilical cord. It was part of your mother. Well, when that baby is born and that umbilical cord is disconnected, that baby has energy inside of it. So, if there is a God, if there is a central intelligence, then it has to be energy. That's what happened in the very beginning. It was all energy. So, it has to be the energy inside our body. And I say that's the soul. I say the soul is connected to all souls and all energy throughout the universe. And my theory is that's God. Now, you know God, every time you say the word God, at least here in the United States, uh, people get some kind of an immediate reaction, some kind of a, an impression. Maybe it's a he, she, an it. Maybe it's just a central intelligence. Uh, but there's a reaction to the word God. Everybody from modern man forward has wanted to believe there's a God. Has wanted to believe that there is life after death. That this, this, this particular life is not all there is. I want to talk about my theory of the soul. My theory is that the soul joins our body for one purpose and that's to evolve. Again I'm going to use the word God in the context of the overall God. It's, it's hard to get away from that word but I don't want you to think about your God or my God or somebody else's God. I want you to think about energy. So the soul enters our body and it's just along for the ride. It's evolving. It's experiencing what we experience. I don't believe the soul tells us anything what to do. It's not here to direct our life. It's here to experience this particular time in the period of evolution as it's been from the very first little cell, they think, started life in, in, the, in the oceans billions and billions of years ago. It had to have a mind, body, and a soul, that little tiny one cell thing that soon became two cells and ten cells and washed ashore and started a plant and built the fish and, and 
the dinosaurs and then on down the line uh, com comes, comes us humans. The soul doesn't care what you do. It's here to experience. So I begin to question, well, can I talk to my soul? And I've been able to, to do that, I think. <laughs> and I always get the same answer from the soul. If there's going to be any communication at all with your soul, you're going to get one answer. One word. Love. If you will come from love to solve every situation in your life, if you will come from love, then you will become enlightened. And that's all the soul really wants to tell you. However, there's too much evidence of people that have reincarnated that can tell you precisely about past lives, been checked out by scientists who agree that person had to live during that particular period of time. It reminds me of that movie uh, Patton when uh, General Patton was standing up on that hill looking at the troops coming at him, the uh, Russian troops that were going to have this, Russian or German, they were going to have this huge battle and here they all coming up through the valley and Patton said, I've been here before. I know I've been here before. You hear people talk uh, uh, in generalities, you know, in my past life I think I was a sitch and sitch. In my future life I think I'll be a sitch and sitch. I'll come back as a dog, come back as a tree. Uh, so the human mind, I believe, knows that they have a soul and I believe once in a while like Neil Donald Walsh like that lady that wrote A Course in Miracles like Jesus Christ uh, I believe the soul comes forward a little bit gives you a peek maybe gives you a little information but other than that I think the soul is just totally quiet it's, it's just along for the ride The theory of a God is nothing more than a theory. Nobody's ever been able to prove it. But the soul, I'm telling you that what I'm telling you is more proof than we've ever been able to accumulate about this mystic God. Now, Here's my objective. My objective is to leave this world a better place than I found it. My objective is not fame and fortune. My objective is to share this information with you and with other people that are receiving this DVD in hopes that we could put together, or you could put together, I would like to be a part of it, but that's not necessary. Put together a documentary that would change the thinking of mankind. You go, wow, man, that's a pretty big deal. Well, Gandhi changed the thinking of a whole nation. It made a whole nation. Tribes quit fighting each other because he was fasting to death. Martin Luther King changed the thinking of a whole nation. Jesus Christ changed the thinking of a whole nation. And all three of those guys, and I could mention a lot more, but what did all three of those guys, what was their message? Their message was love. Were they in touch with their soul? Was that where they were uh, getting this information that they could tell others? What if Everybody in the world believed that they were God, their soul was God, or an extension of the God force or the higher intelligence, however you might 
want to put it? What if, what if everybody believed that? Well, would that stop all religious wars? They'd have a damn good chance of doing that. Why would you want to kill anyone? Rape them, maim them, hurt them, rob them, if you thought they were God. Why would you want to do that? The money that would be saved off the war machine would solve poverty. There would be no jealousy. There would be no quarreling. We would simply talk to our soul about our problems and our situations and we would come from the highest form of love that we could think about in order to solve that problem. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's a big sales job to convince everybody, but I think we could do it. I think we could do it. Excuse me just a second. I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> talking about the soul. We're talking about if we can convince the world that they are God. Now, right away your mind's going to go, whoa, uh, what about modern religion? What about the church? They're not going to be real happy here in this. So, I envision Number one, in the United States, I understand, is that the theory of evolution has increased. The population that goes to church has drastically decreased. I have a vision of being able to go to church Sunday morning, dress all up, take the family, shake hand with God, shake hand with my neighbors, knowing that their soul is God, and they know my soul is God. What a happy atmosphere that would be, right? I mean, that would be a very loving thing to do. Now, maybe some minister gets on the podium and teaches this theory, or discusses it. Maybe he brings forth some of the beautiful things that are in the Bible. Then maybe some guest speakers come in and talk about Anything from raising children to saving your money to investing to uh, the theory of evolution to the latest scientific discoveries. And this, the, this whole program lasts maybe two hours and you leave that church on your tippy toes. You feel good. There was no hell and damnation. There was no you're a sinner and you, you could never get away from it. There was no talk of St. Peter's Gate that you're going to have to get in or you're going straight to hell. Uh, it's all positive. It, it, was, it was a wonderful experience to be able to go to church. The children would just be thrilled. And as they learned this theory and they experienced this kind of experience, as the generations go by, could we... Could we, could mankind really develop heaven on earth? Huh? If we had a change of attitude and conduct, could we make heaven on earth? I mean, you hear so many people now say, man, I must be in hell, the life I've lived here on earth. I, uh, I like to think that when my, my soul <laughs> leaves my body, I'll float up into the energy system, hoping I'm still intact, hoping that for all these zillions of billions of years that my soul is still intact and I can look back and see all of my past lives. And I'm hoping I'll uh, bump into my mom and dad and my grandma those other relatives, my brother, that have died. I can kind of see him up there drinking a Budweiser 
light <laughs> uh, floating around and I say to them, well, you haven't gone back yet. And they say, no, <laughs> man, life is tough. That was tough. I'm just going to kick back here for a while. I mean, I'll go back eventually, but for right now, I'm just going to kick back. And that, that would be a gas, wouldn't it? That, that would be wonderful if you could if you could have that kind of conversation with the loved ones that have passed. And I think it's possible. But back to Earth. Can we create heaven on earth with this theory? If we did a documentary, naturally we'd want to bring in particular scientists and, and uh, people of knowledge that could support everything that I'm telling you and more. And I have a ton more to tell you, but I'm not going to waste your time at, at this time. Uh, so I don't know. That's kind of it. It's brief. Like I told you, my motivation is not making fame and fortune. In fact, fame even scares me a little bit. But if I did make money, I would put it into a charitable foundation that I would form, teach my grandkids how to run it. And I would, I would use that money to, to promote this theory throughout the, throughout the world. I'm prepared to give the rest of my life to supporting this theory. You know, like I told you, I'm 80 years old. I'm fit. I'm in good health, strong. Uh, I don't know how much longer I've got to go. And the Neil Donald Walsh study, uh, God says to him, when the soul is ready to leave the body, it will leave. And he says, oh, but you know, it may stick around for a while if you ask it to. There are many ways to try to create doubt about what I've just told you. But you got to get rid of the negative and get to the positive. All we're going to do if we do this documentary, or you do this documentary, is we're going to present a new theory to the human race. Will they accept it? How long will it take? Uh, is this going to be centuries? Well, I'll tell you something. My reading, my understanding is, I think, I think mankind throughout a great deal of the modern world anyway, will accept this instantly because I think I think it's a movement that's been happening. I think there are other people like me that maybe are are sending somebody a documentary. Uh, you ever notice that, you know, you'll have a scientist or an engineer, an inventor that patents something and there's a guy across the water that was just ready to patent the same thing something new. Uh, I believe that we humans, through our souls and through this energy system, that we understand all souls. Uh, we, don't, we maybe even can communicate with them, I don't know. But through history there have been periods of time when there's a drastic, drastic move into man's higher intellect. I think that's going on right now for everything I see and read. Uh, I think we're on the verge of it, whether but the documentary kicks it off or not, or proves it or not, I don't know. But I do know, or think, that if you're interested in doing this, we got to get it done right away because it might be coming out of somewhere else real quick. I can see an opportunity to make a huge amount of money with this. Uh, very profitable. I have most of the documentary laid out in my mind of how I would do it if I was going to do it. But hey, my living was a whole bunch of different jobs and I got in the real estate business, real estate loan business. 
I retired when I was semi-retired when I was 52. Had to sell my business because of bureaucracy. I've traveled all over the world. I wore out three motorhomes traveling in the United States and, uh, and Baja, fishing, riding four-wheel motorcycles, having a ball. I've done subdivisions, and I, the last 30 years I've been uh, in, uh, learning uh, to invest in the stock market. I say learning because I don't know if you ever really know. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to live, and like the lady that that wrote the book and wouldn't put her name on it and didn't want any money for it. Uh, hey man, it's yours. What I just told you is yours. I, I gave it to you right now. You go do it. Or we do it together. I have a zillion other thoughts, ideas, and information. My one last study, my one last study, I just finished it, well actually I finished it about almost two years ago, and I've been wanting to make this, uh, this recording and send it to you for the last two or three years, but I, there's been a lot of interruptions, plus I kind of didn't have the courage, I was kind of like, uh, do you really want to do that, I mean, people might laugh at you. You're trying, you're trying, you, Don Dixon, a uh, uh, 12th grade education, uh, and you're trying to change the thinking of mankind? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So I was kind of afraid to do this, but I'm not afraid anymore. Oh, yeah. As I told you, I'm prepared to prepared to give the rest of my life to this, to promoting this theory throughout the world because I think we can turn this world around. I think if something doesn't happen to turn this world around, that altruism is going to kill off the human race. I don't think we got a lot, a lot of time left. I mean, man, we've, mankind has polluted everything, tore down the forest, uh, as you're seeing in the Middle East, and uh, killing each other constantly, full of hatred, uh, one religion hating another religion. How would you like to live in Israel and think that, that at any time uh, Iran could hit you with a nuclear bomb? Just, they, they just come right out and say they're going to wipe out Israel. If we convinced the entire Middle East of this theory, would, would all that crap go away? Yeah, I think it would. Uh, it's going to be tough to convince them, but I think we could do it if we made a really professional, really professional documentary with support on, on everything that I'm telling you about this theory. So. Uh, I know I've left out stuff. I've come right from from my heart and soul. I don't have any notes. I don't have any teleprompter. So I know I've left out something. I'm, I'm just not sure what it is. When you, when you get to be 80, you, your memory doesn't work quite as well as it used to work. So you can disconnect now. going to tell you about my very last study. This study is so awesome that it would just blow you away. Uh, have you noticed that our astronomers are telling us that they think they've discovered a new planet? Uh, I read the book The Twelfth Planet a couple of three years ago by Stitchin. Stitchin is the author. Stitchin was a, I guess you'd call him a scientist, and what he did is he went around and read clay tablets uh, 400,000 years ago. Modern man is like 40,000 years ago. 400,000 years ago, 
modern man or somebody was writing on clay tablets. And they, their writing was sort of a form of pictures and hieroglyphics. Uh, the oldest known humanoid is that gal Lucy, which is about two million years old. But they think that they're going to find Neanderthals that are older than that. So Stitchin uh, began to read these clay tablets. He found them in museums. Uh, they, they were discovered uh, by people that went into a cave and they found these clay tablets. Evidently, uh, 400,000 years ago, uh, according to Stitchin, astronauts visited the Earth. They landed in the Middle East to begin with. The reason they visited the Earth was they needed gold. They needed gold to make gold dust to put in their stratosphere. Maybe they were burning up their ozone like we are. And they came here to mine gold. The 12th planet revolves, uh, passes Earth about every 3,500 years. It's, uh, it's on an orbit that's exactly opposite of the rest of our planets, and it comes by Earth about every 3,500 years. Uh, these astronauts, they call themselves the Anunnaki. They were so far advanced from us. And wait a minute, that's not difficult to understand. You know, we don't really know whether we're on the outside of the universe, the inside of the universe, in the middle of the universe. So it's very possible that life formed on some other planet uh, a billion years before us. It's, it's extremely possible. It could have happened. And that they became so advanced that they had a system of of rulers. They called themselves God, or at least that's what Stitchin tells me. Uh, they had higher gods, lesser gods, and then people. The people that were doing the mining got tired of doing the mining. They said, you know, this is ridiculous. We're down here working our butts off 24-7. We need help. So these Anunnaki gods that were here on earth at the time uh, called upon this lady who was a doctor, scientist, brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And she began to alter the DNA of, of these, uh, of these uh, Neanderthals that were roaming that particular area. And she began to turn, turn them into uh, people that had the intellect and the, and, the, and the skill to work the mines. And then they began to interbreed with the Anunnaki's and modify more. And that was the beginning of, of well, you can't call it modern man, but that was the beginning of of a new kind of man 400,000 years ago. Now Stitchin can prove everything that he's saying as to his ability to read these uh, these tablets. Uh, what struck me is uh, I've always been very curious and for 30 years I've been very curious about evolution. Uh, why didn't I hear about this before? This bo these books, he wrote five books and they were written back in 1935. Why hasn't that information come forward? I mean, I've lived a lifetime where there's all this speculation about is there a flying saucer? Is there really a flying saucer? And the government's got flying saucer buried over in Area 66 or something like that. Uh, why hasn't somebody come forward with this? Uh, I mean, Stitchin just lays it out for you, just boom, boom, boom. That's going to really disturb religion also because, you know, uh, God made man or God made earth in seven days and then there was an Adam and an Eve and God made them. And, uh, 
No. Evidently, that's another myth. Another falsehood. People are leaving the church because they've lost faith in, in uh, the belief. There's just too much evidence that's contradictory to everything that those ministers have been telling them. And the false prophets that have interpreted the Bible and sent the tribe out to kill some other tribe I mean, how many millions and millions and millions and zillions of people have had to die early because of some religious belief? Uh, you know, the Inquisition, the Dark Ages. Um, can it happen again? Yeah. But I think before that happens again, I really believe that, uh, that we're on the verge of destroying ourselves, the human race. Like the dinosaur, you know, supposedly a meteorite hit the earth and caused the earth to freeze and that destroyed the dinosaur. But I think humans are on the verge of being able to destroy themselves. Uh, you get one crazy son of a bitch with a nuclear bomb, you know, like that guy from North Korea or some guy from Iran that wants to wipe out Iraq. And we start a nuclear war and whew, it's over, Charlie. But I don't even think we have to do that. I think we're just going to keep polluting and taking and destroying and uh, we're going to wind up destroying ourselves. Mankind is going to be doomed. It'll all start over again. So, if you're in the mood and you can believe this theory, it's going to take you some time. You know, my understanding is you you retain 25% of what you hear and about 40% of what you read. So you're going to have to watch this video a few times, take some notes, go home and sleep on it, kick it upstairs, talk to your buddies. Uh, if you come to the conclusion that there's something to that theory that I just told you, and you come to the conclusion that you could leave this world a better place than you found it, then let's do it. And at the same time that you're doing it, you're going to make a lot of profit. I'll show you how to do that. I know exactly how to do that. And me, well, I'll do anything. You know, you want me to uh, do what I just did? You want me to tell the world about this? I'll do that. You want me to go give a talk somewhere? Or I'll do that. You know, I'm bored. I don't have a lot to do. Uh, so, I thank you for watching this. Uh, my cover letter gives you the, my, my address and phone number. Uh, call me up. Let's talk a little bit. Maybe we can do this thing. Maybe you and I can do this thing. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be a great thing to do? Okay, I'm going to shut up. I love you, God. You're God. I'm God. You are God. It's kind of hard to swallow, isn't it? But you are God. You are an extension of God. I send you my love, because that's where I come from. Always. Bye.